Okay, so it's mid-April and lots of customers are starting to ask about opening their ponds. And they wanna know, do I need to do a full drain and clean or can I just start up my pond? And what do I need to be doing about my fish? So let's talk about spring care of your ponds. Okay, lots of ponds at this time of year are uh, full of muck and dirt and, and pretty grimy looking. Um, first thing I say is don't panic. The fish are usually okay. The water is nice and cold and that means things, they're starting to wake up, they're starting to eat and what you feed them uh, can determine everything that goes on in your pond at this time of year. And actually, I'd almost say at any time of year, food and the quantity and quality of your food can make a biggest difference on the quality of your pond. Okay, so it's pretty bright in here, excuse the glasses, but let's get into the big question. Do you need to do a full drain and clean on your pond this year or don't you? And the answer is maybe. Uh, with a lot of things, it's pretty subjective whether you do a full drain and clean. Um, here in our greenhouses, the weather is pretty consistent. We don't get a lot of muck and algae inside the ponds, but in New England here outside, a lot of the gardens can get really murky and mucky in the bottom. But if you were diligent at putting a net on your pond early in a season last year and prevented all that leaf debris from falling in your pond, then you don't necessarily need to be doing the drain and clean. I suggest do not skip more than two or three seasons um, because think about it, every couple of years we get extremely wet springs and spring in nature is flooding the waterways and that's mother nature's way of flushing toxins and cleaning the water in all our local waterways. Ponds are no different, except we man-made them. So this, uh, if you are happy and content with the algae in your pond and it's just a little bit on the rocks, you can still see all the rocks in the bottom of your pond, you don't have it chalk a block full of leaf debris and you're pretty content with the way everything looks inside the pond, then just do your due diligence to clean your filters, clean your, um, benef um, your beneficial bacteria, clean your filter pads, clean your filters, make sure everything's operational, do the cosmetic work on the outside, dividing your perennials, treat it just like you treat your flower beds. Give it a good cleaning in the spring, go over everything. If you want what's best for the system, I am a big advocate of a full drain and clean on the system. Just because muck can start to build up, most of us aren't necessarily diligent at getting the, every single little leaf debris out, but I also find it to be a great time to get up and close and friendly with your fish, make sure everybody looks happy and healthy, then turn around, look at underwater lighting, make sure everything is well. Any touch-ups that you need to do, much easier to do it in time of spring clean out, but it's subjective. A lot of those answers are cosmetic. You can skip a season. I'd find customers that are 18 feet and bigger on their ponds. Those systems are very stable and many times they will skip a season or two. Uh, but again, I really don't recommend going more than three seasons without a full drain and clean for the overall health and ecosystem. Okay, so in our ponds, there are a few simple things that can make all the world a difference in your ponds in the spring, whether you're cleaning or not. If you're doing a full drain and clean, yes, we are impacting the ecosystem. We are draining that water out. We're not trying to sterilize your system. So there still, still should be plenty of beneficial bacteria down in the bottom, colonizing the rocks and some of this stuff. But if you just put new filter pads, let's face it, we are impacting the system. So what we do is if you are happy with the way your pond looks in the spring, once you're drained and cleaned, we recommend using Maintain. It's put up by Aquascape and it's, uh, they have a few main products and the biggest one is just that. If the pond looks good and we're happy and healthy, we're using Maintain because we wanna keep it that way. So we use this twice a week uh, for the first two weeks and then once a week thereafter, after your spring cleanup. If you are not doing a full drain and clean and you were just start doing a startup, cleaning your filter pads, cleaning your pumps, cosmetic materials, but you're not fully draining, cleaning the system, if there's still a little sediment and such in the bottom of the pond, I recommend switching to clean because clean is designed, uh, again, it's beneficial bacteria predominantly, but the formulation in this is designed to help clean the pond. So if we've already manually cleaned the pond, we use maintain because we're trying to maintain that. If we did not manually clean the pond, then we wanna get the bacteria in there to help them clean the pond for us. I do wanna say, on the clean, it's not a miracle cure. It's a slow, steady process. A leaf to beneficial bacteria is a year's worth of degradation. So you have to be uh, realistic on your expectations, but adding the clean will help try to prevent the time in between needing to clean it. And it does help break down some of that sediment in the bottom of the pond. But the key is whether you cleaned or didn't clean or just starting up, feeding your fish. 
This is the next thing. Everybody, the fish have been dormant all season long. They are questioning that the babies have to be hungry. They are, but they're not as hungry as they will be when the water's warm and in June or July. Uh, but if you're feeding the fish in the spring, the key is, and I don't think you're even gonna be able to read this because it reverses everything, but the key is it has to say cold water fish fruit. So premium cold water fish pellets. What this stuff really is, every manufacturer has their own brand. Of course, we like Aquascape, so we stick with the Aquascape version of it, but it's predominantly a wheat germ. Think of it as a vegetative diet for fish. Fish are cold blooded. So when the water is under 55 degrees, they have a really hard time digesting proteins. Most of your conventional fish foods for in season growth have high protein contents in it. That can mess around with fish, especially right now where we're gonna bump into the 70s and 80s. Everybody's fish are gonna wake up. Everybody's gonna get into panic because they haven't cleaned the pond yet. And then the fish are gonna be hungry and they're gonna be up at the surface. If you don't feed them, they will start eating some of the algae in the pond. But if you are gonna feed them, you wanna feed them that low temperature fish food. The water temperature, if it's below 55 degrees, or even if it's teeter-tottering in that degree range, though fish can be hungry and, and be able to digest the protein, now the sun is out. And then by four o'clock, the sun goes behind a cloud, temperature drops 20 degrees, water starts cooling off again, and then the fish all of a sudden overnight can't digest the proteins that are in the belly. In the spring months, and then again in the fall, if you feed that low temperature fish food, it will help protect them that if they're hungry, feed them. I don't even monitor the temperature in my ponds. Uh, my philosophy is I know the water temperature is about 10 degrees colder than the average air temperature. So if my nights are still getting down into the 30s and my daytime is only in the 50s or 60s, I know that water temperatures probably in the high 40s, low 50s. Once we're in the 70s on a regular basis and our night temperature is getting up into the 50s, then whenever I run out of my cold water temperature fish food, I just switch to the growth you can feed low temperature food all season long. There's nothing wrong with it. So I usually just feed them that. Um, and then when I run out and we're good and warm, when you're not wearing a jacket anymore, it's good time to switch over to a regular fish food. And again, make sure it's a quality food. What goes into a fish comes out of a fish. What comes out of the fish is toxic to the fish. So feed quality fish food. Don't overfeed them. Stay on your beneficial bacteria treatments and just enjoy your pond. Hope that helps. Take care.